let's talk about Flipgrid. So if you're not familiar with it, the, the great thing about it is that it is this wonderful video response tool where you as the teacher pose a prompt or a question, students respond with video replies. You know, short video replies, longer video replies. And so that kind of freaks us out as adults sometimes. Does it freak all of you? If, if I said, hey, you're going to record a video of yourself talking, how many of you would be like, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what's cool is that kids are so built that way. And, you know, especially with, you know, stuff like Snapchat and Instagram stories and, you know, so many of them are so familiar with communicating in that fashion and it just comes naturally to them and it doesn't freak them out, especially the little ones. Have you ever taken videos of little kids and they're like, are you going to put that on Facebook? Right? That's the first thing they ask. That's the way my kids are too. This is the exact same way, you know? And of course, did you know that it's totally free now? Uh-huh. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? So gone are the days of chasing promo codes and of trying to figure out how we can justify the, the premium plan. So Flipgrid got acquired by Microsoft and all this stuff is available for free now. The topics are the questions that you pose to students. So you can ask as many of those as you want. The grids are how you organize your topics. That's where the, the, topic, that's where the topics live. So you can have as many of those as you want. This is the big one for me. Students record a video and then they're able to reply back to each other with videos. And so then that way the whole discussion happens in video all in that one same spot, which is, which is pretty cool. So you've got all this stuff that you can do for totally free. So the big question is not so much what are the features, what does it do, but how can it improve learning? Shouldn't that be the big topic of everything at this conference? Right? It's like, I don't want to know all about, and it's so funny because I'm in the middle of the vendor hall saying this, but I don't want to know all about the features and everything. I want to know how it's going to help my kids. And if my students aren't going to be better because of it, then I'm probably not going to use it. And so I think there's so many great ways that this can be used. And I think the first one is whenever you pose a great prompt, something magical happens. So you ask a question that's not list five facts you remember from this chapter. <laughs> I've seen people take this and they'll turn it into like a video worksheet. I'm just going to take the questions out of the back of the book and stick it on Flipgrid. And I'm like, you're missing the point, you know? So you ask a question that kids, that ties into your content, that kids are interested in hearing their friends' responses about. You put something like that where there's a little bit of themselves in it, where they're using their voice. And all of a sudden, what do those kids want to do after they've recorded that video? What do they want to go watch? And I want to go watch everybody else's videos, right? And so I think when we're able to do that, not only do they want to watch it in class, but they'll get their devices outside of school and they'll continue. And you realize when they're watching those videos, they're getting access to your content. They're continuing the learning on their own, on their own volition. Not because we told them to, you know? Something magical about that, I think. And it's something that I, that I haven't seen in a lot of places. If you're not all about recreating the wheel every single time, I love that there's a library. So whenever teachers create these lessons on Flipgrid that go over well with their students, so many of them add them to the library. So you're able to go in, you know, just like a library full of books, you can go in here and you can pick up one that fits well. You kind of like check it out and then you can add it into one of your grids so that your students can work on it. Of course, you can kind of like adjust it to fit your needs and everything. It's kind of nice to hear other people share what's working for them, right? Now, let me give you one other, one other thought on this. If you use Flipgrid and something goes over well with your students, please consider adding it to the library. Now, if you're like me, so often I'll go, yeah, but what I do isn't all that spectacular. You know, it's like, what do I have that everybody else hasn't already put in there? You have a different perspective. You have a different take on things. And sometimes you add something that people just haven't exactly seen yet. And the specific thing that it is that you teach, there is a tribe of people, probably on Flipgrid and in lots of other places that are begging for that kind of stuff. So please don't discredit your own self and what you're doing. And please be willing to share. <laughs> There's a teacher in Hawaii named a Amy Burval. And she says, people shouldn't be so wary of being sherry. And I think that's, that's so, so true. Grid pals, this is such a neat thing. And so 
One of the things that I love about technology is that it lets us connect to people and places that kids couldn't see otherwise. And now this particular feature of Flipgrid is kind of like a matchmaker for your students in your class. So what that means is your students can be swapping videos back and forth with people, you know, potentially all over the world. And it's kind of like the old pen pals, but you know, with pen pals, you'd have to wait for weeks. And anybody have like a traditional pen pal? Anybody know what I'm talking? Okay, so a few of us, you have to like wait and wait and wait for those letters. And sometimes they would never come and you're like, oh, I wrote this letter and I didn't, this is kind of like, you know, multimedia on-demand pen pals almost, you know? And so that's, that's another feature that I totally love. Let's get into some specific uses that I really love. Kyle, Kyle's not here, is he? Anybody see Kyle? I know he's at ISTE somewhere. Um, sub plans with Flipgrid. Think about that for a second. Raise your hand if you have ever left sub plans that didn't get followed exactly the way you wanted. It happens, doesn't it, right? So I love how Kyle said this in a tweet. He said, don't type it out anymore. Ain't nobody got time for that. When making sub plans, use Flipgrid to create and organize videos. So you can talk directly to your students and the sub can easily access, autoplay, pause and replay your multiple topic responses. Don't write it out, record it in videos. And I would even add to this, what if you also do kind of like a frequently asked questions section? Think about the, thing that, the things that your kids might pot potentially struggle with. Go ahead and record some videos ahead of time that they can access if they struggle with those things. So that's, that's a really great one too. Get parents involved. Um, I was just part of a panel discussion yesterday where uh, a friend of mine, Raina Friedman, who teaches, I think, fifth grade in Massachusetts, she was talking about how at back to school night, she, before back to school night happened, her fifth graders recorded videos on Flipgrid that said, what are your goals for fifth grade this year? And so then when the parents came in, you can imagine probably what happened next, right? Parents came in, they sat down, they got on a device and they started listening to their kids' videos. I mean, just that, you know, hearing your kids' goals for learning for the year is pretty cool. But then they took it to the next level, which was, of course, the parents recorded a video back to the kids. I mean, think about that. Doesn't that kind of like tug at your heart a little bit? Because with some, you know, with some parents, they have a hard time expressing that stuff that gave them a perfect opportunity to do that. And so love that as well. Inviting guests to class. We kind of touched on that a little bit with, um, with the grid pals. But, you know, if you've ever tried to have a guest speaker come to your class and it's such a hassle trying to get them out of their regular job and sometimes paying for their travel expenses and working all that out, you could re literally get guests from all over the world to participate in your class by just saying, hey, here's a link, here's how this works. Would you record us a one minute video? I mean, who's gonna say no to a bunch of kids asking for a one minute video that's gonna take them that much time, you know? So you never know until you ask, I think. And then there's app smashing. Uh, so this is really neat. Flipgrid plays well with some other tools also like Screencastify. Are any of you familiar with Screencastify? I love Screencastify. Okay. What it does is it lets you record your screen and it saves that video directly into Google Drive. So whatever it is that's going on in your screen, you can put slides up there. You can put an interactive map up there. I mean, there's a variety of things you can put up there. Have students record that video. Download it. Stick it into Flipgrid. And then what happens is other kids can watch that video and then start to reply and comment on it and everything. So it's a way to take your Screencastify videos and make them social. And then there's Wee Video. So Andrew Finstermaker is a fifth grade teacher in Iowa who's done such a cool thing. Um, his students record podcasts. So they use Wee Video to record something that they're passionate about. They take that video and then they upload it to to Flipgrid and that's where their podcasts live. So they host their podcasts, so to speak, through Flipgrid. So people are able to go through and listen to all of their episodes, which is really, really neat too.